Hello. All right. Welcome. Okay. So as we are letting people in, it's now 302. So we're going to get started. We do understand that there are going to be some people coming in as we talk. That's okay. Everybody's welcome here all the time. Uh, we're going to get started and, um, and then we'll just keep letting people in as they come along. Um, and then do just keep introducing yourself in the chat, your name, your college, and your role. So again, my name is Crystal Kiekel. I'm the Tutoring Center Director at Pierce College in Los Angeles, and I'm also a coordinator for the California Community Colleges Success Network. That's 3CSN. That's the organization that hosts this amazing event where we can take over the airwaves every Friday at three o'clock to talk about learning assistance and peers and SIs and all the things um, to make us a better, stronger community. So please tell us who you are in the chat and go ahead and go to the next slide. So um, I am just the master of ceremony today. I'm just gonna be doing a little intro and making sure everything is going well, answering questions in the chat. Our rock stars today are um, tutors from Pierce College. We have Valeria, who is an English tutor and also a tutor leader at Pierce College um, for in the area of English. And we have Ronnie, who's a chemistry tutor and he is a tutor leader for science at uh, Pierce College. Um, next slide. They'll introduce themselves in a moment. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to just talk a little bit about how today's going to work. We have a fun and interactive session for you today. We're going to talk a little bit about how to play some games, helps lower affective filters, helps people feel more relaxed, and that helps people learn, right? So it's really important to get these kinds of fun activities going if you're teaching a class or you're having a tutoring session or an SI session or a mentor session, anything at all. These are great ways to get the conversations going. Um, they're also very customizable, and we're going to look today about how we can create those fun activities and customize them so that you can uh, practice your own skills, so you can uh, increase your fluency, and also to help people have a little bit of fun. Next. So we are going to practice with these tools. So do make sure you have an internet browser or like a phone handy. We will ask you to participate in this stuff. We're also going to be sending you a couple of links in the chat. So just get ready to click. Um, and what we're going to do is today we're going to talk for one hour from 3 to 4 p.m. just on how to use Quizlet and Kahoot. Um, and then if you need to go at 4 o'clock, go. Um, if you want to stick around, we're all dedicated to being here for the following 30 minutes from 4 to 4.30. So if you have want to do more of a lab, you want to practice, you want to share experiences, you want to talk, we'll hang out for a little bit longer. So you're very welcome to stay if you'd like to. Next. So everybody's going to start muted, but you're not going to end muted because we will, you know, we, we, you may have a question or you may stick around at the end to have more conversation. So if you'd like to ask a question, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, you can raise your Zoom hands or you can put your question in the chat and then we'll keep the chat going. The chat is really a great way for us to share our own experiences, questions, insights. In these bigger sort of like workshop rooms, sometimes it can feel a little impersonal. Um, and so please do feel free to use that chat to introduce yourself, say hello, tell somebody what they did was awesome, share your own experiences and questions. Next. If um, if you don't know where that chat is, it's at that bottom taskbar. Look for that little talk bubble for chat. Next. And in, in, in order to unmute yourself, if you want to talk, there's like a little old timey radio microphone there in the corner of that black bar. Click that once to unmute yourself. Click it again to mute yourself. Next. And if you want to raise your hand, if you have old Zoom, you would click on participants and then a panel come up and you'll see the little hand raise. If you have updated your Zoom recently, you just go into reactions and the raise hand function comes up. So if you want to practice raising your hand right now, I will not call on you. But then later, if you if you raise your hand, I will call on you. So if you want to practice, go ahead and do so now. Next slide. All right. And as with all of our workshops, we always like to start off with some community agreements. This helps us see sort of like where we're going and what's expected of us so we can prepare ourselves for the work ahead. So today, Please do just give yourself permission to not get the new platform right away. It may not all make sense right away. Um, it may be kind of weird to try to learn a new skill in front of other people. It's totally fine if you don't get it. We're going to hang out for a super long time. It's going to be a very long time before we retire. So you'll have my email. You can contact me at any time. 
but also ask questions. So jump in that chat, ask questions of each other. You don't have to wait for us to answer the questions. Oftentimes people in the room have more expertise than we do. So feel free to answer each other's questions in the chats as well. And just let's reaffirm that it's important for us to be nice to each other today. We're all strangers. Some of us are strangers. It might be a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit scary, but we're all in here for the same reason. So let's just recommit to being kind because in order for us to learn, we have to um, have trust that people are gonna be treating us with kindness. So just make sure that uh, we love and respect everybody and we respect each other's questions and confusion in the chat as well. And, please, and uh, finally, please do be free to share your own insights and experiences. Again, we're not the only people who know how to do this. Lots of people know how to do this and we're all learning together. Next slide. So let's go ahead and begin. We're gonna give you a little uh, link. We're gonna put it in the chat. Um, that link uh, will give you kind of the written instructions for what we're gonna go over today. So if you just want something quick and dirty, you can follow along with that. Um, if you prefer to just follow along with your eyes and not have another document, that's fine. You can ignore that. And if you prefer to have the slides, we'll give you the slides as well. But if you do want a quick guide uh, to take with you, this will cover all the steps that we'll talk about today. If you have a hard time downloading it, just put your email in the chat and I will email it to you. Next slide. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So with no further ado, I'm gonna mute myself, turn it over to Valeria, and she's gonna talk to us about Kahoot and all the wonderful things you can do with that. So take it away, Valeria. Thank you, Crystal. Hi, everyone. All right, so um, some of you might be familiar with Kahoot, but essentially Kahoot allows you to create um, sort of these fun quizzes, informal quizzes really, um, that are multiple choice for your students. And you can use them to engage in an interactive activity with them. Um, it helps students think about their prior knowledge in a subject. Kahoot also has uh, this really great feature that allows you to see how your students responded, uh, like what questions they got right or, or wrong. Um, and then you can use that to check for understanding and then later on um, use that to guide your sessions. But before I begin sort of diving into um, showing you how you can create a Kahoot, I actually wanna invite you all to play a Kahoot that I have created for us today. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, pull that up and then um, and then we'll play a Kahoot. One second. All right, everybody, I think I'll go ahead and get started. Um, okay, so on one screen, right on your Zoom screen, you'll be able to see uh, the questions written out. And then on the other screen, whether it's on your phone or on the browser, you'll see these symbols and you'll have to, that's, those are the answers that you'll have to click on. All right, so let me go ahead and select start. Our first question, what is metacognition? All right, so metacognition is thinking about thinking and I would say this definitely has something to do with metacognition. Awesome. So let's see next, and then we'll see who was sort of quick, quick, and uh, who got the answers right. So okay, we got Wafa Elsamir at the very top. We've got Crystal in second. All right, next question: What is a growth mindset? <laughs> And yes, a growth mindset is the belief that you can develop your talents through effort and strategies. 
I wouldn't expect anything less from educators. Awesome. Next question, I believe this is our last question. Dream of Guinea is now uh, the runner up. And of course, that is true. <laughs> so that is our Kahoot. Let's go ahead and see the final results. Yay, Claire, third place. Second place, Ken. And Dream of Guinea. All right, everybody, thank you all for participating in that. Uh, let me go back to the PowerPoint. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, it's kind of fun, right? You've got this fun music playing, you sort of get a little bit competitive, you want to get the right answer, or you want to be the first one to select the right answer so that you end up on the podium. Um, and so uh, now I want to walk you through how you can create something like that for your students using this platform. So, um, of course, just like with any platform that's online, you have to create an account and uh, creating an account on Kahoot is completely free. Um, there are other options uh, for like an advanced account where you have to pay for it but you can do a lot with just the basic account and then you would just select teacher. Once you've got your account all set up, uh, this is what the homepage of Kahoot looks like. And if you're maybe unsure of what kind of Kahoot you wanna uh, create for your students, you maybe have an idea of the kind of topic that you want your students to um, go through in the Kahoot, but you're not sure what kind of questions to ask quite yet. Uh, Kahoot has this really great option, the Discover tab here. It's a second tab. And when you click on that, uh, you can literally type any topic and you'll find a Kahoot on it. So for example, I'm an English tutor. So if I am unsure about what I want to, what kind of questions, that, what kind of questions I wanna ask my students, but I know that I wanna cover thesis statements, I search a thesis statements and sure enough, a lot of cahoots come up and you can edit them or you can duplicate them. And then of course, be sure to go uh, through the cahoot before you um, have your students uh, play it to ensure that the information on there is accurate because anybody can create this. But this is a good starting point if you just need to get inspired. Uh, now, if you already know what kind of questions you want to ask your students, then you would just select the create option um, sit on that tab line there as well. And you would select this first one because it's the free version. Once you select that, then you're brought to a page like this. This is where you can begin typing out your questions. Uh, but the first thing you want to do, of course, is title your Kahoot up top here and then type your questions. Then you would type your answers down here. Kahoot gives you the option to do either multiple choice or true and false questions. You can also customize how much time you wanna give your students, how many points each uh, question is worth. And then you can even drop in a video here or an image. And then to add more questions, you would simply uh, click here where it says add question and then you'd have as many questions as you want. And then it might look something like this. Now, before you finish hitting done, you wanna make sure to also select the correct answer. Um, that way they know which one's correct when they select their answers. And then you would be able to uh, save and host the Kahoot. Now, there are two options for uh, hosting a Kahoot. 
uh, for the live option that we just did, you would simply select done and then you would be brought to a page like this. You'd see all your questions here on the right and then you would select the play option. Once you select the play option, then you would select this teach option for um, a live Kahoot. Then once you select the teach option, um, it'll take you to a page like this and you wanna select this first option, the classic option. This works best because we are all uh, virtual if we were in person. Um, I've used Kahoot in, in a team, right? So like one person has the device and then the team sort of decides up on the answer. Once, once you select that, then you're able to uh, invite your students to participate in the Kahoot. So sending them uh, the website or telling them to use it on their phone and then tell them to enter the game pin. And then once they've done that, you wait for everybody's names to pop up here. And once everybody's here, all your participants are there, you would select start. And then you'd have that fun experience like we just did. Now, if you don't want to do a live Kahoot, or perhaps you want your students to, um, to do it on their own time, instead of uh, selecting the teach option, you would select, um, oh, I think I skipped this one. Let's, we'll revisit that in a second, but um, Kahoot also um, has this report option. Um, so this is what I was mentioning in the beginning where um, if you wanna see how your students did on the Kahoot quiz, then you would select the reports and you can see everybody's names or whatever username they chose and then the answer they got correct and their score. But this score mainly uh, depends on um, how fast they answered the question. All right, and okay, this is what I was mentioning. So if you want your students to uh, do the Kahoot on their own time, instead of using the teach option, you would select the assign option. So when you select assign, it takes you to here, right? Um, you would select create, and then you would select the date and time, um, the due date. And you would customize this all to your liking, question timer, randomize answers um, in order, or, and if you want to leave the nickname generator on, and then you would select create. All right, everyone. So, oh, and then once you select that, you would send this link to your students. It generates a link for your students to complete the Kahoot. All right, are there any questions, comments, or additions here? You can either type them in the chat or you can raise your Zoom hand. Also, if anybody's tried this in ways that um, are different than what Valeria has tried, again, this is what we do in our tutoring center. Um, we use this in these ways, but there are other ways to do it. Maybe before we move on, Valeria, could you tell me um, how you might use this in a, a tutoring session with a student? Yeah, absolutely. So I have used this, um, especially with workshops. I, found, I find that it works the best because I would have already prepared a Kahoot. Right, so I run writing workshops every Monday and sometimes I'll prepare a Kahoot and have and sort of be get open with that. Right, so to activate their prior knowledge and, and then we'll get into um, the workshop itself. Um, let's see, I have some questions here in the yeah, chat. Also, um, Ken wanted to know if it can be integrated in Canvas and I was just telling Ken that like well, like we just did a tutor training with 150 people and it's all online campus-based tutor training. And we just dropped this asynchronous um, Kahoot link into our Canvas module, just as a link. You could either do it as a code or a link. And then the tutors um, completed their Kahoot asynchronously. And then we, we have the results now. Um, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then Danny says, is there a maximum amount of Kahoots you can have on the free account? Not that I know of. Um, I've had a few cahoots on there, at least 10. Um, and I usually rotate between those like when I use them in my workshops. So um, yeah. 
Um, and yes, Kendrick, it's not a, a full integration. It just, you just take the link and then just paste it into your module. If that makes sense, that's how we've done it. If anybody else has any other ideas for how to integrate it into Canvas, we'd love to hear it. But that's all we do is just, you know, on your Canvas page, you like you're writing out your Canvas page and you just say, click here to join the Kahoot. And we just put the link in there and then they click on it. It takes them to Cam, uh, takes them to Kahoot. They complete the quiz on Kahoot and then they just continue on with the module. Do, do you guys have time to kind of show that right now? If not, I could wait till after the presentation is yeah. done. Let's go ahead. I'll pull it up, and then towards the end, if we have if we have time today, I'll show it to you. And if not, just hang out afterwards. I'll totally show it to you. Okay. Oh, yeah. No yeah. problem. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and Danny says, does it save them for future use so they can be reused? Yes, absolutely. So there's um, that tab bar where it's like home, discover. There's a Kahoot um, button. When you hit that, you can see all the Kahoots that you have created. Mm -hmm. And then there is no limit to the number of questions that you can have in a Kahoot. There's a limit to like the number of answers per question, which is just four, but um, there's no, yeah, limit for the number of questions. All right. And I actually do have the, the link if we want to show it to, for Ken and others, how we integrated it into our, into our um, Training, is that okay? Do I have a second, Valeria? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, great. So I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. So this is our tutor training for our Canvas. Like, a, so all of our tutors are in a Canvas shell. This is like our class, right? And as you can see, we're just here in modules and we just created a little Canvas page, like a, a, a inside the module. Um, and we did a Kahoot um, to help people generate ideas for how they build metacognition into their tutoring. So we just put a giant link right here. And then, um, and then there it is, just a, a quick picture. So that's how we did it. If other people have ideas, we'd love to hear them, but that's how we've integrated in the Canvas. Right. All right. All right. Cool. So, and welcome all. So that is Kahoot, everybody. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Ronnie, who's going to walk us through Quizlet. All right. Thank you so much, Valeria. Uh, can you screen share, though? Or do you... Yeah. Perfect. Slides. All right. How is everybody doing? My name is Ronnie. I'll be showing you guys how to use the other tool that we have out of many, which is Quizlet. Uh, Quizlet, uh, I think, has a perfect spot in the online environment because uh, it, 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 this was started, by the way, by a high school student. Uh, they wanted to see uh, how they can uh, basically use the internet to see a way that they can uh, memorize some terms and get, get some practice using them, uh, using an online tool, right? And that's how Quizlet was born. Uh, so it's very proactive. Uh, it's, it's not like... Uh, it, uh, because it was designed to be proactive, you know, so it has a lot of emphasis on the user uh, being uh, basically uh, engaged in, into the website, uh, which uh, allows them, uh, how can I say it? Basically, to, it gets you to practice more, better. You know what I mean? Okay, so, and it, what it encourages the students to do is to give them more autonomy because it allows the uh, student to uh, set the difficulty level. It allows the student to set the pace. It allows the student to actually sometimes set the questions that they want. Like, let me add another question, right? So it gives them a lot of uh, ability to be creative. So let's go to the next slide. So first we have to start setting up an account to use Quizlet, right? Thankfully, they have a free account, which is amazing. Uh, it has a lot of options and functionali functu uh, functionalities to it. Uh, you just fill up this one page. That's it. It takes like 30 seconds. Or if you have signed up to a Google account, you can basically just sign up with the Google account that you have or Facebook. And once you set up your account, it takes real quick. Uh, let's go to the next slide. You, you get this page, right? So with this page, there are a lot of things you can do, and some of them are redundant, but I think this is their way for Quizlet to uh, help you basically not get lost. So they've, they put the same buttons everywhere. <laughs> so 
the first thing that you sh should do is to create a class, right? Uh, your class, if you click on it, uh, you're gonna have like a big folder, which you can have your flashcard set up in it, because that's what Quizlet does. It, a lot, it gives you the ability to build up many, many fl flashcards that you have. So let's, uh, let's go to the next slide. It's gonna prompt you with what you wanna have uh, your class named as, right? Uh, you can fill that out. You can have the description, whatever you want it to be and click on create. Once you do that, let's go to the next slide. Now, uh, let's see here, I'll just change this one. It's gonna give you the ability, let's say now you, you haven't uh, created anything, that's still fine, right? You wanna, you want uh, the people to know that you have created this class. It gives you the option to send out the link to the students, right? So this is the best way to like, just copy the link and paste it wherever you want. If you have a Facebook group, Discord, uh, Canvas, just put this in and send it out to the students. Uh, this is just a way for them to know like, hey, this guy created a class, you can join. And they're gonna be prompted uh, with an ability to join your course, cool. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. And now you've set up your class, you wanna add some material to the class, right? You click on the plus button, which gives you the option now to start adding the flashcard. So once you do that, let's go to the next slide. It's gonna, they call it a study set. Basically it's a bunch of terms and definitions that you need to fill out, right? Uh, Quizlet calls it terms and definitions, but it's the same thing as a question and answer. So they have an analogous term for a question, they call it a term. And for an answer, they call it a definition. So basically you create your title for your study uh, set, description. And once you do that, let's go to the next slide. Now is where like the meat of Discord is, right? The term, I personally associate questions with it or definitions. I mean, something to be defined, right? Uh, I put them there in the term side and I put the definitions or the answers on the definition side. I know it gets a little bit weird uh, defining the two, but basically you just have to be consistent. The left side, I usually keep all my questions there and right side are all the answers. That's gonna come in handy later when we're setting up a test, right? Uh, the uh, sad thing about this one is that even though it gives you the option to add photos, if you have the free account, there are only select number of photos that you can add that Quizlet provides you. So you can add your, you cannot add your own photos unless you do the paid account, which then allows you to upload your own photos. But still, they have some pretty good libraries. If you, if you, if you click on uh, pick a photo, like it gives you a very good selection to choose from. And then you, after you fill it out, you can go. By the way, you can add cards upon cards upon cards. It goes all the way. Like I have one Quizlet that has like five hundred. Uh, cards in it. So it goes, it, it can get really big. I haven't seen the limit for this. So I'm just gonna guess there's no limit. <laughs> cool. So let's hit create. Uh, well, so when you do that, uh, oh yeah, this is just, uh, I put an example here as, a defin uh, as the definition and the term. Here I imported some uh, cards. Basically I ported this study set from another user so that user already had the photos integrated in it. And that's the great thing about Quizlet. Uh, you don't have to set everything up because you can literally go and look stuff up uh, in the Quizlet website, see what other people have done and just copy paste it to your own class and add things to it. That's the great part about it. So let's go to the next slide. So, uh, uh, that Quizlet button on the top left corner basically gives you the option uh, to go to the home screen in case you get lost or get into a, a uh, like you click on the wrong button and get lost. There's always an option to go back there. And what I was talking about was that button next to it, which is the search. Let's say you're, uh, you want to create a set about chemistry or biology or history or sociology. You just click put sociology there and see what everybody else has done about sociology. So you can import from them. Right, cuts a lot on the workload. So let's go to the next slide. Oh yes, uh, up until this point, does anybody have any questions, concerns? I know I've been- 
I'll ask you the same question, uh, yes. Ron, just while other people are generating questions and feedback. Okay. Um, how how would you use this in a tutoring session? Ah, uh, yeah, perfect. Uh, I would use this if, uh, let's say, I'm uh, the student comes in and says, okay, I have a test, right? And I need to prepare for a test. These flashcards are excellent ways to prepare for a test. Why? Because now most of the tests, since we are online, uh, have become multiple choice. They have become true and false, uh, especially if they're integrated in campus. Now, I know there are some uh, tests that are still fill in the blank and uh, free writing. That also works in Quizlet. So you can set up some questions that are going to be just right. However, those uh, the, the error in that is like next to zero. So if, you, if the person doesn't type exactly like how the, uh, the, the uh, people who set up the set did, it's going to give them wrong. So I don't usually use that. I usually just use the true and false multiple choice. How do I personally use it? I tutor chemistry, right? One of the first things that you need to know in chemistry is the periodic table, right? Fluorine, chlorine, everything, right? And so I create a, a, a quizlet for my students so they can review those. They can review their ions, their paratomic ions, everything that needs repetition, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then um, we have a question in the chat. Can you randomize the order of the questions? Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because right. every set, basically, before you enter uh, the flashcard section, which we'll go over, uh, it, it gives you the option, like shuffle, you know, so okay. you can do that. All right, thank you. So if anybody else has any questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat and go ahead and I'll let you know, Rami, so you can continue on. Thank you. All right, perfect. So uh, before, uh, before uh, you can test the students, actually Quizlet, they uh, created an upgrade a couple of years ago, which is not only to test their students, but using Quizlet as a method to learn, right? So before the students can test themselves, how can they learn from Quizlet? So let's go to the next slide. Uh, uh, the student basically will, will see uh, your class when they're entered their class, they're gonna click on uh, the set that they want to learn from, right? So if you click on, uh, let's go to the next slide, which was from that one, right? They're gonna, be presented with this page and they're gonna they, they the students have the option to click on any of these uh, options on the left side right so the first one that they usually click on which i tell them to do is learn right because so this is like an alternative method for learning than to like open up the textbook and start reading it even though i suggest reading the textbook you have you absolutely need to read the textbook okay <laughs> non-negotiable no okay maybe Okay, so uh, let's go to the next slide. Once you click on learn, right, it gives you this stuff, uh, this page. Uh, basically what you need to do uh, for this one, even though it's learn, it's a game, which is you match the definition to the term, right? Which I found really cool. Uh, so before you do that though, every section on the left side on the previous page that, that I showed you has an option to be modified to the student's liking. Every, uh, every one that we'll go over has the option button at the bottom left corner. And if you go to the next slide, see, uh, if you click on the options button, it, it allows the students to pick what do you want to be prompted with? That's why I tell uh, people to write the questions on the term side because uh, you want the answer to be with the definition, right? Do you want them? You want yourself to, so you want them to prompt you with the question so you can answer with the actual answer, you know, instead of going Jeopardy style, which they give you the answer and you say, you tell the question. So you can do that too. I'm just saying that does, you can shuffle a lot uh, in Quizlet. And even though it's questions, right? Um, you uh, The student can basically uh, uh, choose what types of questions they want to be prompted with, right? So you can say, okay, you know what? My professor is doing all multiple choice. So let me practice with multiple choice and click on okay and you're done, basically. Cool? All right, let's go to the next slide. Anybody has questions on this one Just before we? We did have a question and that yes. was, uh, can you view whether a student has viewed the set or not? Uh, 
for the free version you can't because that's called the Quizlet analytics uh i tried doing that they're like okay this amount per month i was like <laughs> yeah so it, it requires the paid version to see but the paid version has a lot more information about analytics it tells you which one got the highest score like mm -hmm. the frequency of them using Quizlet yeah so all of those analytics questions come uh, with the paid version sadly yeah cool uh the cost i haven't checked the last time of uh yeah but I don't think it's that much. It's like yeah. a Netflix subscription, I think. Maybe maybe a little don't, less. We don't pay our tutors enough for you yeah. to look, right? We're not sponsored <laughs> by Quizlet. Yeah. I should I should have said that we I'm not sponsored. Yeah, but uh, I can look at that at the end and tell you guys how much it costs for the paid version. Cool. So that was the learning. There's also the flashcards, which is what most people associate Quizlet with. Right with flash uh, with the with what they do with it's just flashcards, which is absolutely true. And I think in online session, uh, right? Because uh, I used to tell people in person, right back back in the old times, to actually use physical flashcards to put it in their pockets. Because I haven't heard I hadn't heard of Quizlet before, uh, so I tell them put it in your pockets. But now I just tell them download Quizlet on your phone. You don't have to buy extra paper and lose it. And where did I put this? And oh my God, it's got, got bended and I lost one card, you know, uh, so it, that's a very good advantage for it. So it keeps everything in one place. So if you click on uh, next, go on the next slide, which is basically click on the flashcard, it gives you this uh, page, right? So this page is basically you shuffling through the flashcards and it gives you the status bar of your progress. So if I have seven flashcards loaded up, it tells you where, where I am. And basically uh, this, you can also click the options to show you, uh, do you want to be presented with the definition or the term, right? For each page of this Quizlet, right? You can click on the actual sentence and it flips. So if you're being presented with the definition, right? If you click on it, I'll, I'll show you guys when we go to the demo, uh, it prompts you with the answer. So that's a way for you to know, like you, uh, you've been shown the question, now you, you contemplate the answer, then you click on the card, it shows you the answer. Cool, uh, let's go to the next slide. So yeah, this is just another example. Uh, this was actually the, when you flip, it shows you this, right? I took these uh, slides from English. So let's go to the next slide. So there's flashcards, there's right. I wouldn't advise you guys to use the right option because the, it's not like Canvas where you can put multiple correct answers to give tolerance to the students. Like if they put, something that's capital, not capital, it's gonna give them as a wrong answer, you know? So you have to be very specific. I would limit this to things that, uh, like countries' names basically, because there's only one way to write it, you know, with a capital letter at the beginning. So let's go to the next slide. So if you click on writing, basically, uh, it just gives you this option again with the status bars. Yeah, exactly, spelling. They it's because it's automated, right? If the spelling one character is wrong, it tells you the whole thing is wrong. And it's very frustrating. That's why I don't use this option a lot. I'm just telling you guys that it's there, you know? And it gives you the status, which I think is really cool. Like how much, what's your progress basically? Uh, and it gives you the questions at the top and your answers you're gonna type on at the bottom. So let's go to the next one. There's the spell, which is good for learning languages, basically, right? Uh, it's also right, like the right option, but uh, it gives you the option to, so let's go to the next, next slide. It gives you the option to actually read out what, you're, what, uh, what the question's asking. Uh, so that gives you an option to, to use different modalities of learning. Cool. Uh, I usually don't, uh, use these that often the write and the listen ones because for me personally i didn't have to use them you know it, it wasn't related to mine but it might be to anybody else here cool so let's go to the next slide the test one now i like it i like this one the test one now is okay i've learned the material through the learn and the flashcards now i'm going to test myself this is by the way the student doing this see before you've already built up the set and you've sent that out to the student, the student now says, okay, let me test myself. So they're choosing to test themselves, right? 
once you do this, there's also an option uh, on the bottom left corner, the students can click on it and see, okay, what do I want to be prompted with? Do I want to be multiple choice? So see, it's the same thing recurring back and again and again. Uh, them basically have a big uh, option to customize. That's the whole thing with Quizlet, right? It's customizable on the user end, which is the student. And they get prompted with things like this. So I have enabled multiple things here, uh, free answer, right? Uh, free answer and multiple choice. Once they click on everything and fill it out, they can check their answer and it shows them what, what they got right and what they got wrong. Cool, so let's go to the next slide. Okay, any questions at this point? Yeah, we had a couple of them. Um, yes. and, and I think Mary put up the website, so I think that would help. But um, yes. somebody asked, um, uh, what features does the premium have that the normal one does not? And maybe the website might be the best for that. And is yes. there an app or is it just web-based? Yes, there is an app, absolutely. Uh, so yes, there's an IO, uh, uh, iOS friendly app. I don't know about Android, I haven't used it at all. But uh, for iOS, I have one on my iPad and my uh, on my phone, right? So, and you can have it, I don't know if there's an app on the computer, but on the computer, you can just use the website, right? It's a lot easier. Um, for the premium, I don't know because I haven't tried the premium. Right. I, uh, yeah. yeah, of uh, course. So, <laughs> yeah. And um, just somebody said in the chat, Mona said, um, when you do the right, I believe that there's an override option that can make the answer correct when you get it wrong. Um, but if it was only a spelling error, so appreciate that. Oh, uh, okay. I see. And Mary says, yes, that it's also available for There's, Android. So nice. Yeah, Perfect. those ideas coming in the chat. We appreciate that. Nice. Yeah, I love it. All right, cool. Uh, let's go next one. All right. Now, it's not that serious, right? We, they have games too, so they think of everything. I love it. Uh, there's, there's the matching game. The matching game is awesome because you just literally hover things on top of each other uh, to match. And if they're correct, they disappear. So your job is to basically, as the student, right, is to make the screen less cluttered by matching more things. So if you click on it, it's going to show you this uh, page is going to pop up. You're going to click on start game. Let's go to the next slide. And it's basically going to show you stuff like this. So I had the US history one uh, loaded up. I think it was US history. Yeah. And you basically, uh, it shows you a bunch of terms and a bunch of definitions, and you're going to match each term to a definition. Cool. And they disappear. And it times you, which is, you know, like no pressure. <laughs> uh, and it goes in seconds. So you just see the clock flying off. Uh, I usually don't do good at these because I just keep looking at the watch. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty fun, you know. And by the way, the grade doesn't go to your canvas as a student. So if you get things wrong, that's the cool thing about this, that you don't get punished for getting things wrong, right? Because I know most learning institutions, they put, oh, you get two tries. And after that, we sli start slicing your grade up left and right. Uh, this one, you can make all the mistakes that you want because nobody would know about it, right? Uh, that's why I tell people, make all your mistakes here so you don't have enough mistakes to do when test comes up, right? But just dump all your mistakes here. Cool, so that's the match game. So let's go to the next slide. There's the gravity. You might think, what does gravity has to do with it? So let's see, so let's go to the next slide. It's called the gravity game, uh, which basically is uh, you're trying to protect your planet from a meteorite by answering the correct question. So if you thought that was high pressure, imagine this one. So it's literally meteor meteorites hitting your planet and uh, it gives you like a bunch of seconds you see meteorite hitting down and the question is on the meteorite and you have to type up the answer or choose the correct answer and the meteorite disappears. Uh, yeah, so if you wanna go more hardcore, there's always that option too. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. So it's basically something like this, right? It gives you the question there and before you, you have the right plan. So I think they were thinking about Mars since back then. So you're like, you're a Martian and there's a meteorite hitting. It's, it's, it needs some character development, but they're getting there. Uh, and you literally just type the answer and click, click, and uh, you're, you save your planet. Cool. So let's go to the next one. Slide. 
Uh -huh. Those were the games. Now this is the more uh, interactive one because you can actually do this with live humans. Right? Humans are involved in this one. So let's click on next slide. The live one, which is basically uh, who can finish a certain number of questions the fastest, which is the same thing as uh, Valeria did with the Kahoot. Basically, you're being prompted with different questions and uh, who's going to finish faster. But this one actually gives the status bar for everybody in the uh, in the race. It's actually like a race and they, they assign animals to people. It's great. Uh, so what you need to do, since it's online, right, uh, it's better to click on the individual portion. So if you click on that, so each player is an individual. You don't working with teams. It gets a little bit hairy when you put teams because now they have to go and break our rooms and nobody can see the screen and you're like, what is happening? So the individual one is better. So let's go to the next slide. If you can manage the team one, I mean, good for you. You know, it's even more awesome. Here, I'd be careful, right? Uh, it's better to choose the one uh, on the on the right side, basically, or the one that you, you seem fits you. Like for me, I know that the right side, that the question is the term, right? Which I put here as the Republican party. And the answer is its definition, right? So you want, you want the students to be prompted with the uh, term. And so they can answer with the definition. Cool, so I'm gonna, if I click on the right side of it, I'll be prompted with the next screen. Let's go to the next slide. I'll be probably with something like this. So this is where I start inviting people to the uh, to the game, right? Uh, so what students can do if they have their phones with them, I, 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 let's not do it now, but uh, like if they have students and you're in the Zoom, you say, okay, open up your camera so you can scan the barcode, which takes them to the game right away. See, they don't even have to press on anything. Or they can go to this website and type in the code, same thing as we did with Kahoot, right? Or you can copy the game link and shoot it off to Facebook or anywhere you want or an email so they can hop in. Uh, so it gives you a lot of options to, to connect with people to send them the game. And once you do that, I think now we switch to the demo, right? There's, are there any slides after this one? No. Okay, so let us let me switch to the demo. Guys, I'll show you. And as you're uh, switching to the demo, I just want to yes. also draw um, folks' attention to the chat again. Um, Mary has put up some information about Quizlet Go. Um, that's the ad free, um, and you can use the app offline. So there's some great information there also. So thank you very much for that, Mary. Appreciate you. If anybody else has any other ideas or tips, please do share them. This is a fast moving uh, world that we're living in. So um, mm -hmm. we love all those ideas. All right. So this one, I have uh, U.S. history slash political science uh, one. Uh, by the way, you can, uh, there's a lot of things you can talk about. I can spend like three days talking about it. You can combine flashcards. So if you, I, I just want to talk about this real quick. If you have flash, if uh, flashcards set for each test, right, or each midterm, and now it's finals time, there is an option to combine all those sets in like a mega set. Right, set within a set within a set. Yeah, so the, there is that option too, which is awesome because if your tests are cumulative, you don't have to create a new set every single time. That'll be insane. So now uh, let's go to the, let's see. Oh, yes, I need to sign up with my actual account. Yikes. Sorry, guys. Let's. Uh, no problem. While you're setting that up. Yeah. Well, while you're sitting, are you going to try to get it, get in there, Ronnie? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So Give let's give Ronnie second. a second for that. So we can actually do a demo if you want to hang out with for the demo. Um, and I do want to do the trolley stop now. So as he's setting up, I'll just um, talk about what happens next. So um, we will do a little demo of a Quizlet game so we can all try it together. Um, and then um, that'll be, that'll bring us right up to four o'clock. So at four o'clock, a lot of you I understand need to leave because you all have dinner and other plans. We completely get that. Um, if you need to go, go, that's fine. 
I'm back. Uh, Jan is going to put a link to our evaluation in the um, in the chat. So please do let us know how this went. We want to make these better later. Um, and also just remember that we're here every Friday at three o'clock to talk about another um, learning assistance tool or concept. Next week, we'll talk about how learn, uh, peer educators and faculty members can learn to work better together and build better partnerships and collaborations. And if you want to go to um, just 3CSN, um, dot org. Um, there's also a lot of other cool workshops like this on civic engagement and equity and um, how to use technology. So come back to learning assistance, but there's of course other wonderful things out there as well. Um, we'll play the game now. And then if you want to hang out, we'll again, we'll be here until 430 today. So if you want to ask questions, try things, talk about other platforms, we'll, we'll hang out a little bit. All right. All right, so okay, let me start the game. Sorry guys about that. Uh, I was like, what is happening? Okay, so, okay, so let's start, imagine that that didn't happen. Okay, so uh, live, right? We click on it. I, I, it's again, the US history one. And we go to individuals, boom, select. I want to be prompted with the term definition, boom. And if we click on it, oops, oh, there's the sound. Of course, there's always the sound. Music off, yeah, please. <laughs> so, uh, see, uh, I have already two players waiting. Nice. So, uh, I think it needs a minimum of 12 people to start the game. Yes, if I remember. Uh, so, what you can do is basically just uh, take your phone out if you're if you're not on your phone and go to your camera and just make your camera see the, the barcode. It's gonna prompt you with like a, uh, a website to click on. If not, let me put the, this link in, in the chat. Copy, all right, so there's people shuffling in. And let me go to here. This is the website, guys. And you can basically just read off this uh, number here and put it in there. So, yes, you will be graded. Okay, uh, cool. Let's see, I'll give you guys a couple of seconds to load up. We have 16 people right now. If you're not sure about, if you remember anything from US History 1, that's fine. Just try it. You know, Call yourself you know? Ronnie. Yeah, who, did I join actually? Oh yeah, I did, <laughs> cool. All right, it's 3.58, so let's go ahead and start it. All right, so now you can see how many people uh, joined. And if you see somebody suspicious here, you can just like say, okay, you know what, this guy out. So it gives you those options too. So let's go and create the game. Uh, oh, yes. It just gives you uh, like confirmation. Uh, and now we start the game. So you should see the questions. There you go. See? Oh, uh, by the way, if you get a question wrong, uh, you get set back. So see, now it gives me, uh, I can see this, uh, the progress of everybody here. You'll be prompted with 12 questions. If you get them all right, you win. Penguins is going hard and reindeer too. Let's see, anybody hitting four? Sea turtles is still at three. So it's like I'm like a horse racing game. Okay, reindeer going hard again. All right, penguins taking the lead. All right, oops, yep. Some people are going backward. Yeah, this one, like you literally can't get anyone wrong. Sea turtles going at six, going at six, halfway through seven now, seven, seven. Will it hit 12? Let's see. Oh, koala's getting at six. All right, there's some competition now. Oh, sea turtle is heading eight. Oh, nine, very dangerous. I want to keep going? I know it's frustrating. Aye, yes. So at six, sea turtle is at 10, very spicy. All right. Be careful, almost there. Final inch. Seven, we got some eights, so there's people catching up. 
All right, ones and twos, you still have time. Time is relative. You got Penguin at nine. Ooh, Sea Turtle is back at zero, but no worries, we can catch up some momentum there. <laughs> 11 penguins, yes! Penguins one, my favorite animal. Love it. Uh, penguins. And it gives you the second uh, and the third people who you got bears. I like bears, you know. Never had the chance to meet them, but it's cool. So, see, guys, that's the demo. That's it. All good. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, please uh, join me in thanking both Valeria and Ronnie in the chat. Give them some reactions, so uh, maybe like a heart or something cool like that. Um, they've actually been in tutor training today, so they've been training since um, eleven o'clock this morning. Ronnie since eight thirty this morning. So, <laughs> so thank you both so much for this wonderful presentation. We're just, I just feel really uh, lucky that we have such amazing peer educators around the state of California who are willing to step up and show what they know. Um, so if you are ever interested in doing something like this as well, uh, we'll have a call for proposals, call for proposals out soon. So if you would like to host something like this in the summer or the fall, um, be on the lookout for an email from me and that'll be coming out soon too, because we really do want to show the power and breadth and strength of our educators, peer educators, faculty members, classified staff, volunteers, everybody across the entire state peer educator is definitely a team sport. So we need you all in here. So um, if you need to go, um, we completely understand. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. And we hope to see you back next week at three o'clock when we talk about uh, building collaborative relationships between peer educators and faculty members. And we hope to see you at three CSN events in general. They're all free. They're all online. So come and join us.